Hey there, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, we will be doing a full comparison between the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra versus the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Both of these smartphones are the current flagship offerings from two of the biggest rivals in the smartphone industry. As such, people are naturally asking questions. Questions such as, is the iPhone 11 Pro Max a better smartphone than the Note 20 Ultra, or is the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra better than the iPhone 11 Pro Max? And the most direct request of all is, just tell me which one is better. And in this video, that's exactly what we are going to tell you by doing a full side-by-side -side comparison of every aspect of these smartphones. So if you want a crystal clear response, keep watching, let's dive in and get started with the build and design. So both the iPhone and the Note 20 have a similar build quality. Front and back, you'll find glass on both smartphones with a solid metal band around the edges. This makes for a high-end build, therefore both smartphones feel like a million dollars when you hold them in your hands. When you move on to the design is where things differ. They both have massive frontal displays and they both look gorgeous. Note 20 has a large and tall display that dominates the screen, leaving tiny bezels on all four sides with a hole cut out on top center while the iPhone continues to have a notch which houses the front camera and the Face ID system. You will observe that the bezels on the Note 20 are actually thinner than the iPhone. Now, all in all, I must say that the design is a subjective choice, but in my opinion, Note 20 pulls ahead. It seems more clean and futuristic in overall presentation from the front. In my opinion, the center hole cutout on the Note 20 is a better option than a notch, as it has less intrusion while watching movies, as I will show you very soon. Now, both smartphones come with water resistance with the exact same water resistance rating of IP68. Rest assured, both phones can easily handle a rainy day or an accidental drop into a puddle of water. Both smartphones offer high quality stereo speakers that produce loud, deep, and rich sound, which is perfect for listening to any type of media. So to summarize, in this category so far, we have an equal overall value from both smartphones. The only thing I prefer is the overall design of the Note 20. Now let's move on to the processor, memory, and storage. The iPhone Max sports a powerful A13 Bionic processor with 6 GB of RAM, can be acquired with 64 GB of storage for the base model, with available 256 and 512 storage options. Starting price for the Max is $1,100. The Note 20 also sports a powerful Snapdragon 865 Plus CPU with 12 GB of RAM and can be acquired with 128 GB of storage for the base model with the available 512 gig option. Starting price for the Note 20 Ultra is a mind-bending $1,300. The Note 20 also has 5G capability, while the iPhone does not. In the storage race, the Note 20 pulls ahead. It has a higher 128 gigabyte base storage and has a micro SD expansion slot, so you can add an additional one terabytes of extra storage on the Note 20 if needed. Now, if you move on to the benchmarks, it is clear that the iPhone has more raw horsepower than the Note 20. This time around, the, the lead is not groundbreaking and the real world performance of both smartphones is rock solid with swift user experience. So the iPhone certainly wins in terms of processing power, while the Note 20 takes a lead in storage capacity and storage expansion options. Now, 5G is interesting, but it's only available in less than 5% of the country, so not a big win right now. Now, let's talk about the dimensions. So, as you can see, both smartphones have somewhat similar dimensions overall, but in this day and age, dimensions and weight don't seem to have much of an influence on buying decisions. Nobody's going to say that I'm going to buy the iPhone just because it is a little bit smaller. So, let's move on to a much more important category, the display. The iPhone has a 6.5-inch Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 1242 by 2688 with 458 pixels per inches. The Note 20 has a 6.9-inch Dynamic AMOLED display with a resolution of 1440 by 3088 with 496 pixels per inches. 
both smartphones support HDR10 were available for superior video viewing quality. Both of these smartphones have fantastic displays that look stunning from every angle. They're not dull, they're very vibrant. The Note 20 is sharp and clear and highly color accurate. The iPhone is sharp and clear as well, also offering exceptional color accuracy. Overall, quality-wise, I cannot recommend one over the other as they both look very clean and crispy. However, the Note 20 Ultra has two things that sets it apart. First, the display is larger, so it has special appeal to anyone interested in extra display real estate. Movies and videos will feel more immersive, especially because there also isn't a huge notch in the way. Number two, the Note 20 Ultra has a brand new 120Hz display, which allows you to get super smooth scrolling. Now, 120Hz is not everything but it does make a perceptible difference in terms of motion smoothness as you navigate your smartphone. The iPhone has a smaller display and it is locked at 60 hertz. So in this category, the Note 20 has a lead due to the 120 hertz option and a larger display, but as far as display clarity and brightness is concerned, they're both at the top of their game. Let's move on and talk about the software. So when it comes to software, it is really going to be a matter of preference. With Samsung, you get the latest version of Android that allows for a customizable experience so you can fully tweak your smartphone to your own sense of style by using things like widgets and themes. On top of widgets and themes, you're able to access special features like the edge screen, which is a side screen that allows you to add even more widgets of your choice available at a swipe and every single area is still further customizable. Additionally, you can also download and install third-party launchers that take personalization to the next level. iPhone's iOS is a more limited system, yet with iOS 14, you do get the option to add widgets to your home screen. That's a step in the right direction. Overall, iOS feels polished and it does have a superior app ecosystem. When it comes to gaming apps, iPhone will deliver beyond Samsung simply because the Apple App Store has better games which run smoother than their Android counterparts. That's not to say Android doesn't have good games, it does, but iPhone performs better when it comes to games and does offer more exclusive games for the platform. That's really what it's all about in regards to software, an open-ended, customizable experience versus a closed-ended, app-driven experience. Both systems deliver in their own world. Which one to choose remains with the end user. However, the Note 20 does have a hidden weapon that the iPhone can only dream about, and that is the S Pen. S Pen is a multifunctional tool that brings a new dimension of functionality to the Note 20. It allows for precision writing, precision sketching, and precision drawing if you so desire. You can create masterpieces if you have the skill and patience right on your Note 20. You can also navigate your smartphone with the S Pen, which is cool, and you get access to the special Air Command menu that gives you additional software features not present on any other smartphone, let alone the iPhone. Now let's move on and talk about the camera. Note 20 has three rear cameras and one front-facing camera. That's total four cameras. While the iPhone 11 Pro Max has three rear cameras and one front-facing camera, that's also a total of four cameras. I don't really care about the front-facing cameras too much since either smartphone will deliver if your objective is to take selfies or do video conferencing. Now, on the rear, both smartphones have the following setup. A telephoto camera for zooming in, a super wide angle camera for wide sweeping photos and a main camera that most people use all the time. Now when we dive into the particulars, the Note 20 Ultra is more capable. The main camera is 108 megapixels camera with an upgraded sensor that takes superb photos with rich detail. The iPhone has a 12 megapixel main camera, which is a master class camera, yet it falls slightly behind in bottom line quality. Now with the telephoto camera, the Galaxy Note 20 is capable of 50 times hybrid zoom and five times optical zoom. The iPhone on the other hand is only capable of 10 times hybrid zoom and two times optical zoom. So the Note 20 has a better zooming camera as well.
When it comes to the video, both smartphones offer 4K recording at 30 or 60 frames per second or 1080p at 30 or 60. Both phones offer excellent video stabilization to take steady video with minimum shake or blur. Now once again, Note 20 gets some extra capabilities in video as well. It can now record in 8K at 24 frames per second using its main rear camera. Not a lot of people are going to use it, but the option is there. iPhone maxes out at 4K. Now as a total package, both smartphones do an excellent job of providing the user with a solid multi-camera system. For an average consumer, either camera will yield great quality photos, delivering full satisfaction. However, the Note 20 Ultra is a more appealing package for people looking at more extreme options such as 8K video and higher zooming capabilities. Now let's move on to the battery. In the battery department overall, you get a full day of battery life with medium to heavy use on both smartphones. However, in my initial tests, the iPhone did yield almost 1.5 hours of extra battery life, so it does have a slight lead in battery. Both the iPhone Max and the Note 20 offer wireless charging, which is fantastic. Note 20 has a 25 watt super fast wired charging out of the box with the included charging adapter and the iPhone Pro Max has an 18 watt fast charger in the box. The Note 20 does charge faster than the iPhone so it gets a lead there. Additionally, the Note 20 now offers wireless power share which allows you to charge other smartphones compatible accessories such as wireless earbuds and smartwatches using the back of your Note 20 a feature the iPhone does not have. The Note 20 Plus definitely has the lead in the battery features department. Let's talk about the biometrics and security. So the iPhone 11 Pro Max offers a powerful Face ID system that uses your face to unlock it. It is fast, convenient, and secure. The Note 20, on the other hand, has the in-display fingerprint sensor that also works flawlessly and has a special futuristic appeal since it is built under the display and it is invisible. This is mostly a matter of choice since both systems work great, but Samsung gets extra points for having it in the display without sacrificing screen real estate. All right, so let's move on and do a conclusion. Let's tie everything together to find out which one of these smartphones is a superior device while being conscious of the price. Note 20 is $1,300 while the iPhone 11 is $1,100. One thing is clear that both smartphones offer value, but one of them does lead in overall feature set. Let's see the advantages of the Note 20 or the iPhone. Note 20 comes with a minimum of 128 gigs of storage. In my opinion, has a cleaner design. It offers the wireless power share feature and faster wired and wireless charging. Note 20 also has a more aggressive camera setup with powerful zooming capabilities and 8K recording. It also offers a better screen with more screen real estate and the 120 Hertz refresh rate. Finally, the Note 20 Ultra offers 5G which right now I don't think is a big deal. On the flip side, the iPhone only has one advantage that is superior to the Note 20. It has a more powerful processor. Otherwise, they both have many flagship features such as IP68 grade water resistance. And of course, they both offer top tier multi-camera systems and top tier display quality. In any case, looking at all the metrics and seeing how the Note 20 has more features over the iPhone, it is easy to conclude that the Note 20 is the better smartphone. However, we have a slight problem. Although the winner of this comparison is the Note 20 Ultra, it comes at a cost. It is $200 more expensive than the iPhone 11 Pro, which is a big price bump. So surely the Note 20 is a more comprehensive phone package. It is the winner in a side-by-side -side comparison, but it comes at a high premium. And at $1,100, the iPhone 11 Pro is still a top tier phone. So it's gonna be hard for me to say to simply get the Note 20 Ultra because at a cost savings, you're still getting a powerful device with the iPhone. So basically, here's what you should do. If you're not worried about the pricing or in the market for the best of the best, I would say go for the Note 20 Ultra, but if the price is a little too steep, then you can buy the iPhone. And that's the end of this comparison. I told you which one is better, and also we were conscious of the actual price difference. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below and let me know. And for now, guys, have a fantastic day.